How many of those seven millions were minds you think she may have actually changed? How many minds will change at this point in the race? Well, one, that's a big deal. I mean, to get that kind of an audience, both both of them are trying to get to those larger audiences, and they're not, there isn't going to be another debate. So uh, that, that, I think, uh, was a big benefit to doing that interview. But also, look, the, 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 they are trying, both of them are trying to expand their coalition in these last 19 days. Uh, and Kamala Harris clearly is out there trying to reach, and she's got to try to reach um, Republicans and Republican men in particular. Uh, and I think, so going on Fox was a great idea, but I also think General Milley and some of the other um, uh, re Republicans like uh, Dick Cheney and uh, and Liz Cheney, uh, that are stepping out, and you're seeing more and more of them doing that, and members of, of, of Trump's administration that have come out for her. I think you're going to see more of that in the next uh, 19 days as well. Trump, on the other hand, he's got to somehow close the gap with women. Um, and I think that's a, a, going to be a, I, that's, it, I'd rather be Kamala Harris at this point because I think she's got the easier job and, and, and some firepower. Mm -hmm from other Republicans asking, giving Republicans a permission um, structure to, to cross party lines and support her. Um, Trump's got to try to convince um, a big gap with women to and close that somehow. And, but but that, that's what he's going to try to do. Uh, 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 they need to do that to make sure that they, they uh, have a chance to win. It's funny how these things go, Joe, and maybe this is what happens uh, in the absence of another debate. But after the Fox interview with Kamala Harris last night, Republicans are saying that he owned her and Democrats say she crushed him. You, know, you see it the way you want to see it. But something very important was said by Kamala Harris during this interview that we haven't heard before. Let's listen. Let me be very clear. My presidency will not be a continuation of Joe Biden's presidency. And like every new president that comes in to office, I will bring my life experiences, my professional experiences, and fresh and new ideas. To what extent does I'm not Joe Biden need to be part of her closing argument? I think I think part of her part of her argument from almost the minute she got the nomination was we need to turn the page. Uh, and it's not just on Joe Biden, but on uh, in, in the difference in new ideas, but also on Donald Trump. So I think that message works for her in these closing days, particularly as she's trying to grow that coalition. She's got everybody who was going to vote for Joe Biden. It doesn't matter. There, there's no one who was who going to vote for Joe Biden uh, in the you know on the Democratic coalition who's not going to vote for Kamala Harris. It's expanding beyond that. And her administration will be different. I do think, though, that um, that one of the things you're going to see now is, and we'll, you're seeing the focus on early voting, this is now going to turn out to just be a turnout election. I mean, th at this point, they, they are trying to fight to broaden the coalition, but it's really who gets their vote out. The, 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 yeah, that's as you were saying, there's, there's not a whole lot of undecideds really out there, or not a whole lot of people who might change their minds. There are a few, and they're going to both do what they can to get them. But but it's going to be at the doors. Who has the strongest organization, the and the most energy, and the most uh, volunteers out there who are going to door, door to door, particularly in the seven battleground states, um, that is that is going to decide this election now. Because even if Kamala so, Harris does win this thing, fifty two forty seven, uh, you know Biden won at fifty one forty seven um, in twenty twenty. She's going to win the popular vote. There's no doubt about that. The Republicans have only won the popular vote once out of the last eight elections uh, for president. So, but those those battleground states, they're still with that margin, still going to be, you know, twenty thousand votes in a state, maybe fifty thousand in another one, like we saw. So, in with 20 that in mind. Joe, yeah. if the margins are going to be that tight, if it is about turnout, what if, say, 100,000 voters in Michigan who are either Muslim, Arab American or sympathetic to the Palestinian cause who didn't vote for Biden in the primary cycle decide they can't show up and vote for Harris? And with that in mind, I do wonder if you think the developments today, the killing on, of is Israel killing Hamas's leader, Yahya Sinwar, might actually help Harris with that issue. Uh, I think it could, particularly if it does start to lead to uh, real negotiations and, and, and a ceasefire. Uh, and there's a lot of hope for that now, I think. 
But I, I think in the end, you're, I mean, you, you put your finger on it. There are places uh, like Michigan where a few thousand votes uh, one way or the other uh, could make a big difference. Uh, the, the, the campaign knows that. They're out there uh, working in those communities, trying to make the case. I think uh, her press conference today, uh, again, showed her leadership. Um, that's going to impact things. Uh, so this is all, it really does, every single thing now over the next 19 days matters, right? But in the yeah. end, what really matters is did you get, is going to be who got their vote out. And that is another big advantage that I think the Harris campaign has because they've got a strong organization that they've been, has been built there for over the last couple of years in those yeah. seven states. And they've got a lot of volunteers because of the how energized uh, the, the party became once she was the nominee. OK, so question. We've got about, what, two and a half weeks to go here. What's more important, Joe, in deciding the actual outcome this next stretch, two and a half weeks to November 5th or the two and a half weeks that will follow November 5th? I think that's going to be a real uh, look. I, I think this thing uh, could go on for days after the election. I mean, I, I, I really uh, we need to expect that uh, it, it's not going to be it, it could be clear um, a, a winner called that night. That's totally possible. I kind of think that mm -hmm. will happen. Uh, but uh, it, it doesn't mean that it won't be questioned, that doubt won't be out there, that, le that legal challenges will happen, that, that, that Trump will not agree that he lost, that he did. And, you know, we'll see how that all plays out. But, no, I think the 76 days between November 5th through January 20th, the inauguration day, may be just as important as what happens on election night. Uh, I'm not, you know, it could be over that night. But I don't think that's what we should expect. I think the country and uh, and journalists need to prepare for a long um, a long seventy six days uh, till we get yeah. to a to, to inauguration day.